Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our next presentation. Uh, our next presenter is uh, Western Atlas Resources, uh, a company that's exploring in, in Nunavut. Uh, and presenting on behalf of the company is uh, CEO and Director Fabio Capone. Fabio, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Derek, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. And um, my name is Fabio Capone. I'm the CEO of Western Atlas Resources. And I would like to start by thanking uh, Derek and Recloud for setting up this event and also all of you for uh, uh, taking the time to listen to our story and showing interest in the company and its assets. Now, a quick run through uh, the corporate disclaimer, and now we will start by giving an overview of the company and its assets. So Western Atlas Resources is a junior mining company currently focusing on the exploration of the Middle Bank Gold project located in Nunavut, Canada. It is a project with a district scale footprint, so that provides uh, uh, a potential for multiple discoveries. In order, we, we are strategically located adjacent and along trend, uh, a nickel legal middle bank and Amaru producing gold mine. We fully permitted for exploration and we have identified several targets for uh, follow up with drilling that provides for uh, uh, significant exploration upside potential. In addition to that, uh, last year, we have acquired the rights to the Low Incredible project. It is a project, it is an advanced stage project located in the Bolivar state of Venezuela. It is a project that I've been knowing for uh, over 20 years. It has 900,000 of uh, gold uh, in uh, uh, measured and indicated resources. It has pre feasibility study, metallurgical study, scoping study. It is a project that is ready to go, but it was nationalized in 2011 by the nationalization law of the late Chavez government. So uh, we know really active on it. What we've been doing is maintaining very close relationship with the National Assembly, that is the parallel Venezuelan government recognized by over 50, 50 countries, including United States and Canada. And we made a proposal to, uh, uh, on one side, seeking the restitution of the project, on the other side also, uh, we propose to acquire two additional formally producing assets uh, in the country. Now, uh, all this is subject to change of government. So, as I said, uh, current focus of the company is the exploration and future development of the Middle Bank Gold project. So, a little bit about myself. Um, I started as a business developer within this industry over 15 years ago. I started developing projects in uh, Europe and then Latin America. And I was then uh, asked by the then CEO and founder of Endeavor Financial, a merchant bank uh, completely focused on natural resources to join the M&A team of the bank uh, in Vancouver. I did so. I left in 2008. One of the managing directors there left a few months apart. Together, we co-founded CB Gold with an exploration asset in Colombia. And the company was eventually acquired in 2015. I then founded uh, uh, Western Others Resources, and as, and as I said, I'm currently serving as a CEO. So together with the other members of the board and management, we have a multi-decade experience in both natural, uh, natural resources and capital market industries. We raised over $5 billion to finance natural resources projects, <clears throat> and some of us like uh, uh, Serafino Iacono, uh, the chairman of Western Atlas, are behind many success stories within this industry. For example, he's the co-founder and executive chairman of Gran Colombia Gold, the largest gold and silver uh, underground producing company in Colombia. He's the co-founder and uh, CEO of Caldas Gold, uh, currently uh, uh, producing and uh, expanding a multi-million ounces uh, gold deposit in Colombia, co-founder of Bolivar Gold Corp, uh, formerly producing gold company in uh, Venezuela that was eventually acquired by Goldfields for over $300 million and uh, m uh, many others. So uh, we believe that uh, we've been able to assemble the right mix of uh, technical and business skills that will enable Western Atlas to progress from simply being uh, an exploration company uh, towards development and eventually uh, production. About the capital structure of the company, we have 115 million shares issued and outstanding, over 160 on a uh, fully diluted basis. We are uh, backed financially and technically by Gran Colombia. They own approximately 26% of the company. They have acquired their stake 
uh, uh, through two public financing rounds. Uh, management and directors are, uh, own approximately 25%. 2.6% is in the hands of an institution and then the rest is retail. I am the largest individual uh, shareholder of the company. And together with the others uh, within the, uh, uh, the board and, uh, and with the other members of the management as well, we have acquired our shares in each financing round and on the secondary market. So why Nunavut? Well, Nunavut is a pro mining jurisdiction with over four decades of prosperity in mining. It is home to world class operating mining companies and also home to multi million ounces gold deposit. Over 13 million ounces of gold in proven and probable reserves and over 15 million ounces of gold in measured and indicated resources have already been certified in the area. And what it really attracted us also was the ability to stake and acquire mineral properties with uh, uh, a district scale footprint. And as I said before, that provides for potential multiple discoveries, as it is in the case for some of the companies shown in this slide. So now talking about the, our Middlebank project, 580 square kilometers of uh, mineral properties uh, distributed over three blocks. As you can see in the image here, all the yellow glided blocks belong to Western Natas. Everything else belongs to Anico Legal. We own the properties 100%. There's no royalties option or edge of any sort on the properties. We fully permitted uh, for exploration. There are uh, excellent infrastructures in the area. We are based in Becker Lake, the nearest community. Uh, it is serviced year-round. There's a modern airport, modern facilities. It is a hub for shipping via Hudson Bay during summer and fall, and also a hub for mining activities. Also, Nico Legal has a presence there uh, in the community. In addition to that, there is 110 kilometers four-season road that goes from Becker Lake up to the Amaruk Mine. And their road crosses through our properties, facilitating enormously uh, all the logistics related to the exploration uh, uh, and future development of the project. The road is, it belongs to Anico Legal. Uh, it's currently used by Anico also to transport all the ore that is mined, uh, the Amaruk mine, down to the uh, uh, processing facilities of the Midbank formerly producing mine. Uh, in fact, the Middlebank mine ceased commercial production in uh, December 2019. Amaruk uh, started commercial production uh, a few months before and is currently using all the uh, mining uh, uh, facilities of the formerly Middlebank producing mine. Uh, so we finished staking these properties early 2017. And we, uh, uh, we were fully permitted by mid 2017 and we ran an extensive exploration program, uh, uh since this program had yielded, uh, high gold and silver value up to 13 gram per tons of gold over 40 gram per tons of silver. But it enabled us to also, uh, define numerous targets for follow up with drilling. And we started drilling one of these, uh, numerous targets. Uh, uh, this past summer. So we focus uh, at the very beginning uh, on target B1. It is the first diamond drill program, uh, uh, ever, uh, run, uh, on these properties. These are untested properties that have never uh, been drilled before. Uh, in addition to that, the geology in the area is well understood thanks to the work that has been done by a Nico Legal in its predecessors over the past decade. So gold is generally associated with bended iron formation and shear zones, and we've been able to identify these geological settings with kilometer strike length within our property. So uh, here is an example. This is block B. You can appreciate the results of a previous exploration program. So far, we've been able to identify three targets, namely target B1, B2, B3, and target B1 uh, is where the company has focused uh, 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 this past summer diamond drill program. So uh, here at zoom in of the same target, you can see the underlying geology. And as I mentioned, we identified 15 kilometers of banded iron formation and over six kilometers of uh, shear zone only within this target. And we uh, uh, tested these structures with the uh, 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 drill program that we ran this past summer over 3,500 meters of uh, drilling, 
13 nodes distributed over seven platforms. Uh, average uh, uh, depth was uh, 300 meters. Uh, now, in addition to block B, we also own block A. You can see here, this is a block that is located between the Amaruk and Middlebank mine. Here again, the results of previous exploration program. So far, we've been able to identify even here three targets. And this, together with the additional targets that you can see here, namely target B2, B3 within block B, will be the subject of next year and years to come uh, drill programs. Now, uh, we are also the newest company that has started exploring in the area. Uh, uh, the companies that you see in this slide have been operating in the area at different stage for well over a decade. And not considering uh, an eco-legal that is a standalone case. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, Sabina Orin, uh, uh, now Fury Gold and TMAX Resources, have a market cap in well in the order of hundreds of millions of dollars, even uh, 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 during the exploration phase. And so we believe that we are well positioned to deliver the strongest upside potential among our peer group uh, through a discovery and essentially close the gap in terms of market cap uh, uh, with our peer. Uh, so in essence, why do we believe that Western others resources represent a good opportunity for uh, uh, an investment. Well, uh, district scale uh, uh, mineral property holdings uh, provides potential for multiple discoveries. We strategically located a, a long uh, trend and adjacent to the largest coal producing company in the area. We fully permitted for exploration. There are excellent infrastructures in the area and uh, we had defined several targets that could provide a significant exploration upside potential. Moreover, management and directors are fully invested in the company. Myself and the chairman uh, of Western Atlas are respectively uh, first and second largest individual shareholders uh, in the company. And as I say, there is a strong uh, upside potential uh, that could come through a discovery, especially if compared to our peer. Uh, in addition to that, we have also a long-term strategy to deliver value to our shareholders. And that goes from the development uh, and monetization of currently existing assets like the uh, Middleband project through the uh, a joint venture and acquisition of additional assets. They could be early stage assets where we can add value through exploration, but also assets with historical data. Now, we have been working constantly in order to provide Western Atlas with uh, uh, a project that can be worked year round. And so they could provide a steady uh, news flow, if you like, to the current shareholder base and future uh, investors. Why? Because the Middlebank project, uh, it is uh, uh, very prospective, but it is a seasonal project. It is a project that you can generally, or, or better, we can uh, operate on uh, uh, from April till October. So there is the need uh, to add to the company uh, a project that we can work year round. And as I say, we've been working constantly evaluating different uh, opportunities that came to our attention. And we believe that we will be able to add uh, uh, one or two additional assets to the company in the short term. So I would like to wrap the presentation here. Uh, I would like to thank you once again for your attention and we now leave it open to questions. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Fabio. It's a, it's a great, uh, a great overview of Western Atlas. Um, perhaps uh, we'll start with, uh, um, you know, you, you guys have just recently created or completed your uh, your exploration program, your 2020 exploration program from this summer. Um, and I think one of the things people might misinterpret about not, when you talk about exploration and none of it is that it's remote. Um, and I don't think that that's the case because of uh, how close Baker Lake is and how and how how the operation was. Maybe talk a little bit about the infrastructure, how you benefited from the infrastructure uh, at Baker Lake, and including you know from a uh, even in a, in a COVID scenario, but also just in, in general. And then you know how you expect to maybe further benefit in the, in subsequent programs. Correct. So uh, the the fact that we so close to Baker Lake, for example, it enabled Western Atlas so far to operate. Uh, without the need of building a camp. That has been itself a huge uh, cost saving for the company, right? Uh, again, 
Uh, we also benefited from the, uh, all the logistics that has been put in place by a Nico Legal over the years. Over this past, uh, for example, uh, uh, summer drill program, uh, a Nico Legal has provided us uh, with uh, access to the road uh, in order to, uh, and they sent us five containers of consumable spare parts uh, to be used for the drill program. They will come and refuel the uh, um, our tanks every three days. Uh, so uh, again, there are excellent infrastructures in the area. Target B, uh, so block B is uh, 20 kilometers, less than 20 uh, kilometers uh, far from uh, uh, Becker Lake itself. Uh, and uh, uh, again, that has benefited uh, enormously. Uh, block A is a different story. Block A is uh, further north. It's right between the Middle Bank and Amaru producing mine. So in the future, uh, in order to drill that pro, uh, project and uh, 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 with the save cost saving that we had uh, this past summer, we had to enter into some sort of agreement to we, with the Nico Legal. And we were working on it already. Uh, what happened is that the, then the COVID has put uh, everything on hold. Um, but again, uh, even with the COVID, we were admitted uh, um, uh, um, after, uh, uh, let's say, a, a period of uh, quarantine uh, that we were forced to in Winnipeg, we were admitted to uh, the community. We are based in the community. So, um, and we've been working there um, uh, and, and we've been based in Baker Lake for the past four years. It, it has been extremely easy for us to work. I, I'm used to work in Latin America. And I can guarantee you that there is a kind of misconception that it's uh, operating in the north uh, uh, is difficult. It hasn't been difficult for us. So I, I assume everyone comes with a different perspective. But uh, uh, for us, it's been extremely easy. Again, we benefit of the work that has been done by, uh, in that particular case, a Nico Legal in the air, right? So uh, maybe right. some other comes with a different uh, experience. Yeah, I mean, and I guess that leads to sort of what I think is the next obvious question. Obviously, Nico Eagle, um, should uh, Western Atlas make a discovery on, on one of its properties, uh, the natural acquirer of those properties, uh, whether yes. it be West, Western Atlas as a whole or as individual properties, is Nico Eagle. Um, and so maybe, maybe talk about um, your – I know that the metal bank complex is important to Nico. It's almost 400,000 ounces a year of production. It's forecast to grow and be one of their largest producing mines going forward. So yeah. maybe talk about – so obviously they're interested in what you're doing. Maybe talk a little bit about your relationship with them and maybe how you benefited from, from their experience. Yeah, I mean, the relationship started uh, over three years ago, right? We we staked those properties, and the moment that we got registered, uh, uh, a week after they announced that they were going to develop the Amaruk uh, mine, so they put an application to take essentially the entire area there, uh, and uh, the application got rejected. They filed a notice to protest to try to take the properties away from us. Even that got rejected. So it was a, it didn't start with the wrong foot, the relationship, but there was again over actually four years ago. And now we are in very good terms. As I said, uh, they helped us enormously during this past uh, uh, drill campaign. The rig came from their mine. The, they sent us five containers of consumable and spare parts. Uh, we refuel uh, our fuel tanks uh, every three days. Uh, so we are in very good terms with, with them. We were uh, also, as I say, kind of working on some sort of uh, agreement uh, to cooperate um, uh, and share some infrastructures in the future with, that will put on hold because of the COVID. Um, uh, they're the, the big companies, the kind of the elephant in the room there. The, uh, the middle bank mine has ceased commercial production. So they're using all the facilities right now for the Amaruk mine, and we sit right in the middle, right? So they're transporting all the ore from uh, Amaruk down to the middle bank. That's 57 kilometers. Nevertheless, the Amaruk deposit is shaping up really well. It started as open pit, and now it's going also underground. But again, we sit right in the middle. Uh, and it is obvious that upon uh, uh, discovery, uh, they represent our obvious exit strategy. They kind of surrounded us in the uh, in, in the places that they consider the most important, right? Uh, and they're very active, exploring themselves surrounding uh, uh, our our blocks. 
And then in the uh, area surrounding our drugs. And then just one last quick question. Uh, obviously, the drill program is complete. When do you expect to uh, to to be announcing some results to the market? So we we uh, are supposed to receive tomorrow the final certificate for the first. Uh, and I say tomorrow because generally are coming every uh, uh, sorry on Thursday. So for the first six holes, and from now to. Uh, I would say uh, the beginning of November will probably be out. We sent all 13 holes uh, at the beginning of September to uh, to the um, uh, lab. Uh, uh, so they are, uh, we sent it in different batches, right? So the first batch should be should be out probably with with final results um, between this and next week. Okay, excellent. Something for investors to look forward to. Uh, thank you very much, Fabio.